Here we go through two viewers. I've had to let this one get a bit old before I made a comment on it or did a reaction video on it. Something that happened, um, I think it was the end of last week or over the weekend. It was all over YouTube at the beginning of the week. It's old story now. And um, I just, for my own reasons, I just, uh, I thought, don't say anything, Gertie, because it's not going to be very productive. So the story is, homeless guy sat outside McDonald's and this happens. Let's have a look. Come on, get on with it, dears. Right, can I stop you there, right? You see, the comment I want to make about this, because I did think to myself, shall I say something that would get by the North Korean style censorship on YouTube? Shall I say something sort of vanilla? Comment on it? Shall I not comment at all? Or shall I get on there and say what I really think? And fortunately, sadly for me, and probably for Vu, uh, yeah. I'm going to say what I really think. Now, this to me is a metaphor of what is happening currently in Britain, in our culture. Do you notice the ethnicities of both the, the guy with the dread, dreadlocks, I would say, is probably British. The other guy, not so much. It reminds me of somebody who's probably migrated here, like geese, you know. Uh, is he French, maybe? Has he come over from France? One doesn't know, you see. But anyway... The whole uh, of the industry of security is run by, well, it's run on many, many people of non-national. Uh, the first thing they need when they get here to be a security is a, a criminal records check, which obviously they all pass because they've only just come here, haven't they? And up and down the country, hundreds, thousands, if not millions of working class white people get harassed on a daily basis by Mickey Mouse bleeding security they've come over here like the guy there that's uh, throwing water from uh it looks like one of those mop bucket things you know the industrial ones over the the young lad there um who's sat in the doorway homeless it's not actually is he outside mcdonald's or is he out i think he's sat sort of next door to mcdonald's but either way the security took exception to him and thought it would be really funny to throw water over him in his sleeping bag um, and as I say, to me, it's just a metaphor of how we're being replaced, really. In everywhere you go across history, you go around the world, um, the indigenous people, once people come over, whether they migrate or colonise, whatever word you want to use, the culture, customs and uh, flavour of the country, people in it are just pushed to one side. And increasingly you see... Uh, if you think the Aborigines, uh, Canadian Americans, American Indians, all these people were marginalised when the newcomers came in, weren't they? All their customs were scoffed at, their religions, their, their values, everything. Um, increasingly, it was the newcomers and the real uh, the colonists or whoever they were made the rules. Uh, made uh, With us, we virtue signal like crazy. Oh, look, you're so welcome. You can literally just rip us off and strip us bare. We don't care. Um, and they run everything, and to be honest, it doesn't matter where you go. I bet everybody that's watched this has had some negative experience, and Mickey Mouse bleed security guards that just exceed their remit in every way. I could stand here all day telling you things I've seen. It's absolutely terrible. And after the Rwanda genocide, I can't remember now, because do you know what? I can't be bothered. I was going to say asked, but I thought I'd say bothered instead. To, to think about, was it the Hutus that genocided the um, Tutsis or vice versa? But anyway, when peace was restored, obviously there was some reckoning up to do, wasn't there? And all the people that had been committing the, uh, the genocide were then given amnesty in countries such as ours. They arrived on this shore and Bob's your uncle, Fanny Jibli nod. Yes, they didn't have to. Well, we had security check, came up brilliantly clean, you see. So straight away, they were given a uniform sent out on the streets to pave like this. I'm not saying he's from Rwanda, but I bet you anything he's a bleeding migrant. They come over here and it's a piece of how you're being racist. No, I'm not. I wouldn't behave like that in their country. I don't expect them to behave like it in, in my country. Um, in what, what race, what creed, what religion, what custom, would culture would in anywhere in the world think that's an appropriate way to treat somebody? You know, the guy is down on his luck. Actually, the story pans out that he was a product of two heroin addicts and he was in the uh, foster care system. 
Uh, one thing led to another. He's got mental health issues and he's homeless on the street. He's not a drug drug addict. He's not a drunk or anything. He's just waited. He's 25 and he's waited since he was 17 to be housed. He's just sat there in probably one of the world's most coldest cities, dampest, bleeding, horrible, unforgiving cities to be homeless in. And this menace has come out and tipped water all over him. It's about time us British indigenous people stood up and said no more. It's our bleeding country. How dare you treat people like that? See, if you'd have reversed that and the guy was a white cleaner and he was sat there like that, there'd be a bleed outcry. But it's absolutely OK to treat white working class people like this. It's terrible. And that is what I think it is as we see an absolute metaphor of everything that's going on in our society at the moment. And it's no good looking either at the left, the right or even the centrists. OK, it's too far down the bleeding road for that. Sold our souls to the globalists. And this is what we have to put up with. And we are bullied. I've been bullied myself by these people. But I stand up for myself. Usually I go deaf, you see, my dears. That's what I do. Or because they, they consider me to be beneath them, I act accordingly. You see, I become even dumber. You see, and that is the only way you can treat them. I become dumb and ignorant, and in no way can I understand anything they're telling me. Usually shouting or ordering you to do something, aren't they? Yes, bleed menaces, a whole load of them. Minimum wage, bleed Mickey Mouse security guard. And half of them work for bleed Serco as well as another bunch of arseholes. I mean, don't even get me going on Serco. Have a look at who runs Serco. You know, yes. Yes, they seem to, um, as we say, traffic the people in, don't they? To fill their employment roles it's all i'm saying and i'm not saying anymore because i probably said too much but as for security guard kiss my fat ass